real quickly on that point, mm-hmm. Unser just doesn't have a tactical bone in his body. <laughs> I have never seen a career law enforcement officer look like he's never held a gun before the way Unser does in that scene. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you are watching part two of tonight's three-part show. We just finished part one where we both did a tasting of Redemption. What was it, Ken? Straight bourbon whiskey? Is that the yeah, correct? Yeah, straight, bur- straight bourbon whiskey. Perfect. So Redemption straight bourbon whiskey. And Ken, I'm going to put you on the spot. Where would you rank this one? Yeah, you know, I I, I love it's a strong attempt, but I don't think it was really a, a, a huge success in my opinion, at least for me. I mean, when, I, when we started doing this show, I... I didn't really have a lot of knowledge of what I have now just over the time and comparing the number of drinks and bourbons and whiskeys that we've yep. been, we've been trying. I'm learning a lot and you can really feel where this one just falls for me, at least a little bit short. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you look at the proof and you think about the mash bill and you think about the age statement for me, if there was one thing that really stood out in terms of what I'm tasting, it's, the no more than two year age statement. Yeah, it's it. You're right. It's a little. It it drinks young. Yeah, it does. Well put. Um, I, I like the presentation. The bottle's great, but yeah, it's it's not on my list of straight sippers that I'm just yeah. going to put on the rocks or or, or straight up. It's it's going to be a a mixed beverage kind of bourbon for me yeah, anyway. I agree. I agree. All right. So before we jump into tonight's episode of Suns, I want to remind everyone to like this video. Be sure to subscribe to the show. Also, you can click that little bell at the top right to turn on alerts so you won't miss a single show. And we can't stress this enough. Let us know how we're doing. You can leave us your questions and comments in the comment section below of this video, or you can also email your questions to us at ask at bourbonbros, that's B-R-O-S dot TV. And if your question doesn't suck, we may even answer it on a future show. All right, let's get into tonight's discussion of Sons of Anarchy Season 2, Episode 2, titled Small Tears. Now, Ken, last week when we teased this episode, I referred to it as Small Tears. Yes, you did. Obviously, I hadn't watched the episode. Um, Tears and tears spelled the same. Mm -hmm. I went with tears. Um, it's actually small tears mm-hmm. and you realize that very quickly once you actually watch the episode. Right. You do. And, and I had watched it probably ahead of you again. And so even when you made reference to it last week, I, I knew oh, it, it'll come to you soon. It, you'll, you'll see it soon enough. Ah, uh, okay. So you were, you were kind and you let, let me off the hook on that one. Yep. I did. All right. Well, I appreciate that. So we are going to talk about small tears which is, again, Season 2, Episode 2. Original air date on this one, September 15, 2009. And we get, uh, this one was written by a return, returning writer. Um, and he's written some on his own. He's also worked with Kurt and co-written some episodes. But it's Jack Lojudice. Mm-hmm. Um, the first time he came up, I'm pretty sure I absolutely butchered his last name. Um, which I apologize for. I researched up and down to try to make sure that I got the name correct. There's no interviews I could find where he's referenced by name. Um, But after a lot of research and going back to the origin of his last name and researching the correct uh, pronunciation, I am 99% sure that the correct pronunciation is Lejudice. All right, we'll go with that. Um, And then... One new thing we want to start adding into the show as we go through the the download of of key facts is the IMDb score for this episode, um, which is 8.2. So we'll start sharing these scores moving forward with each episode, um, but 8.2 out of a possible 10, pretty strong. Um, And I would say... You know, there are things that this episode has and doesn't have, but I would say that the score is fair. I'd agree. It's a strong episode. Yeah. It's, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I think it's well rated. I think that's about right. Um, all right, let's cover a quick synopsis, Ken. Uh, once again, I do modify these because most of the time when you read the synopsis, it feels like it's telling you the entire episode. Uh, we want to leave a little bit to the imagination and again, encourage everyone to not just go off the synopsis, but actually watch the episode and then join us here for the discussion. So the modified version is Chief Wayne Unser finds Gemma at the warehouse after the rape. Mm -hmm. Gemma and Unser argue over next steps and Tara comes to the rescue. Uh, Unser takes Gemma's car out for a joyride. Mm -hmm. uh, Luann and her porn company are getting squeezed from all sides. And I just got to say, Ken, there was a lot of innuendo I could have used in, in this storyline. It was just too easy. So I left it out. I'm not going to take the quick, easy win. Uh, but after things escalate, Luann gets snippy with Jax and quickly regrets it. Mm -hmm. Jax sees an opportunity for a much needed and legitimate revenue stream. The Mayans and the One Niners both come to Sam Crow for weapons after the body of the Mayan that Opie killed is discovered. Tensions between Jax and Clay continue to es escalate. Zobel continues to calmly stir shit up in Charming while AJ can't seem to figure out why everyone is in such good spirits after the rape. And Bobby Elvis does not have a good episode. No, he doesn't. Overall impressions, Ken. Well, I think that was a great summary. I think we can go ahead and just start with the closing now. I think you did a wonderful job. Um, <laughs> just skip right to the end of part three. Yeah, we're, we're done. done. Yep. Leave your comments and we'll catch up with you next week. <laughs> Take a no. bow, drop the curtain. <laughs> no, I, I think like, for me anyway, I, I watched it. It was, there were some funny moments. It, it, it wasn't earth shattering for me. It wasn't one of my favorite episodes. There was a little bit, the storyline, you know, it's a follow on to a very heavy moment. It, and it was hard to watch, but you see the pain that, 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 that Gemma's going through. And yep. there, there's, you know, there's some comedic elements, but largely it was just kind of informational, at least for me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think the challenge with this episode is there are some really great moments, mm -hmm. but there's also like the whole storyline around Gemma's rape is pretty heavy and it's kind of a downer. So you, it's hard to walk away from that storyline going, what a great episode. That's fair. Um, but the acting and performances were fantastic, and there were some great moments to help kind of offset that. But there was. yes, there overall, was. It, it's kind of a downer. Yeah. Agreed. So it's hard to get excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, did we have any new characters introduced in this episode? I believe so. We, we did. We <laughs> There's one that jumps out, and that would be uh, Georgie Caruso. Ah, and yes. He is the, Good the, old Georgie. The, the, the adult entertainment, uh, I don't know, he runs a, a Entrepreneur. Big, entrepreneur, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, it's played by a well-known actor, Tom Arnold. Yes. Who does a good job with this little sleazy character that it is. I mean, I won't say he's he's um, the most annoying character in the series. I'm not going to go back and even <laughs> cite the name of that person because we've moved past that at this point. Um. We also have Lila, who's one of the, yes. the actresses there. That's Which has kind Lorette. of a a fairly small role in this episode, but you and I both know this is a pretty prominent character it that is. is going to evolve in the yes. series. Yes. And, and we'll leave it at that. Another one that jumped yeah, another one that jumped out to me is Mita, and she is the nanny for, for Abel. Yeah, we. This is only the first episode with Mita, but I love this character. Yeah, she's she's great. She's yeah, it's, she's a great character. Well, well played. So let's quickly go through the storylines. I think we pretty much kind of already captured this in the synopsis, but we'll just kind of again crystallize the storylines. Um, and we're so early in the season. Things have not kind of settled into those that are really episodic and those that are really the recurring because we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of have everything in in kind of the ABCD format. But storyline A, the major storyline for this episode is the aftermath of Jim's rape. For sure. For sure. Um, 
and then we get into kind of the the additional storylines, which is, um, and I think this is a strong B storyline, which is Luann and the issues that she's having with her porn business. Um, you then have the Mayans and the Niners who are needing guns so they can go to war. Uh, you have uh, Zobel, which we know is a recurring storyline, but it's continuing to try to muscle out Sam Crow. And then also kind of in that recurring storyline and carry over from season one, Jackson Clay continue to have tension and be at odds with one another. Right. Yeah. I don't know when that ever goes away, but that yeah. is something that yeah, it's definitely in here. But would you agree those are kind of the major storylines that, that kind of permeate this episode? Yeah, definitely. And again, right, so, the, the heavy weight on the storyline A for me, yes. it's just, this is there throughout. So let's just jump into some of our favorite moments in the episode. I'll let you kick things off. Um, where do you want to start? Well, as always, we'll start with the open. I mean, they, they, this uh, is a this is a series. You, you of, can't <laughs> skip the cold open. You can't. That this is a series. This the series is known for its openings and its closings. So I have a feeling yes. this is going to be uh, definitely recurring throughout the rest of this series here. But um, it, it opens up and again in the aftermath of Gemma's rape, and she's unconscious. which real quick. Mm -hmm. Just got to let's just time out. All right. Stop. All right. I can't imagine. Writing a scene like that for my wife. I don't know how Kurt Sutter did it. And I would be curious to know how that conversation went between <laughs> Kurt Sutter and Katie Seagal. Listen, here's what we want to do here. Because <laughs> it was yeah. hard to watch. It was. I don't know her and I'm not related to her. Yeah. I. So I just had to say that because, again, as I watched that scene after we talked about it last week. Um, I, I don't know that I could write that for somebody that I cared about. Yeah. That would be difficult. And yeah. I would be curious to know whether, <clears throat> like if, if I did write it, I'm not showing up when they shoot that scene. I'm going to skip that. Yeah. That would be hard to film. Wouldn't it? Yeah. I, I guess. But anyways, I, I, I guess, I, I guess actors have to really take on the role and separate that from, from reality completely. And, I don't know. They do a good job with it, but back to, back to where it, where it started. She's unconscious, and she's it, it picks up right where the last episode left off. And uh, Unser's there, and he's showing up on the scene, kind of looking for her. Um, he was obviously tipped off as to what yep. was going on, um, but he doesn't want to portray that to Gemma. He's trying to hide it from her, but but he finds her, and and, and real quickly on that point. Mm -hmm. Unser just doesn't have a tactical bone in his body. I have never seen a career law enforcement officer look like he's never held a gun before the way Unser does in that scene. You're, so you're referring to when he tries, when he's blowing the padlock off the door, right? He fires well, two he shots at it. when he first realizes that things have, are, don't look right and he pulls the gun he's, out of his holster. He's like twisting The way he kind of holds it. <laughs> It's great for the character because he has that kind of, you know, old timer, but like just not tactical, especially with the way we've kind of now seen so many um, law enforcement dramas where you have actors who have been trained and how to properly hold and, and how to <laughs> operate in a tactical position. And then you see this and it really kind of shines the spotlight on how. He just doesn't have that training. <laughs> Polar opposite, right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was kind of that was funny. But he he comes to a rescue and he, he he's taking her away. And he, his objective is to take her for medical attention. But but she's resisting because she is trying to hide what happened. She wants she doesn't want the word to get out, and she she just she just wants to keep it to herself. Doesn't want anyone, including Clay in the club, anyone to know about what's happened. Where are you going? St. Thomas. No. Got to get you to the hospital. No hospital. Right. So she she makes a call to to Tara because she knows mm -hmm. that she knows that she can trust Tara and and Tara can come give her the medical attention that she needs and she'll keep it on the down low. Yep. Um, during that opening too, if you recall, Alvarez calls Clay. Oh, and when Tig got the <laughs> Tig, call, uh, Tig got the call. That scene, <laughs> Tig under the woman. 
Yeah, another. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details. You need to watch the episode, but mm-hmm. I'm just. I'll just share that he's in a compromising position. We'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. But when he throws her off him onto the floor <laughs> with a thud, <laughs> followed by, "I love you." Yeah. Yeah, just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so funny it was so funny just a, a night of excess at the club again um but he walks in with the phone and wakes up clay and says hey it's alvarez you need to talk to him and and alvarez is calling to inform him that they have found the the body that yep. the, the jack set up and it was holding up nine right so he's he's calling to say that the niners are responsible for this death mm-hmm and Clay kind Which of shot how Opie left the body. N- no, it's not, and it, it was the right thing to do, I believe, to get rid of that uh, the the evidence there when he, he carved that that signature in. Um, yeah, you. That's an interesting point, Ken. I know Clay's pissed that Jacks changed it, but I'm unclear on how tagging the body is being SOA makes things any better for them. No, you're you're going to just have all the heat in, in the world come down on you. Right. Like, yeah. I don't understand why he's so pissed. Yeah, that's, he should be, he should understand that. But, um, yeah. So, what's interesting here is you can feel it. It's, he does not support Alvarez at all in this. And he basically tells him, hey, ATF thing's got us tapped. You better be telling me some straight shit, sir. I'm as straight as shit gets, man. Sorry. At that point, you can you can see that he's he's siding with the Niners, or he's he's leaning that direction at that point. Yeah, and we know from previous episodes, Clay does hold a grudge. Oh well, yeah, he can. And Alvarez did try to kill him. Right. Yeah. So, but he's not doing a good job of of kind of hiding that fact and trying to create the illusion of wanting to play nice. And I think Alvarez is starting to pick up on that. Right. So another thing that, that happened, and I think it was at the end of the, the Oak Hold Open, and it's it's just the, one of my favorite moments of this episode, at least, and it's where Unser is forced to come up with a plan. Oh, yes. Did that happen, be- that happen before the, cl- the, the, the opening? Yes, right? this is it part did. of the cold open. Because it, it was so good. Um, the joyride? The joyride. So what he has to, so he's at, they end up, Tara's helping Gemma nurse her wounds. Mm-hmm. And trying to figure out, Gem, uh, Tara comes up with a plan to get her back in the hospital where she can get the treatment that she needs, but kind of not on record, right? Yep, yep. And Unser's left with this, okay, I, I'm supposed to hide this from Clay in the club, but how do I do that? And right. off he, The evidence is yeah, right here. It's right here. It's right there on the face. So well, I got to come up with a plan. No one's helping him. He's got to get creative, which he does. So he, he, he leaves the hospital. And he takes Gemma's car to the outskirts of town there, right? Yep. And Which runs, is a great car. It's a great car. It's a beautiful, what is that, a Cadillac? Cadillac, yeah, yeah. built on the Corvette platform. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. And um, it's hard to watch because he runs the car into a barrier. Oh, the magical day to be alive. <laughs> it's perfect. What a it's great a, way to close it, the cold open. It, it's so perfect. So I like the way that 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 uh, opening scene uh, played out. Yeah, I, the cold open was great, and and it does really kind of tee up the entire episode. You get a lot in there. There's some funny. There's obviously some heavy with Gemma. Yeah, you see um, you see her um, pictures as a child too on the walls. Uh, that was just touching, you know, from the and, past. And, and, and obviously, that's very intentional and really kind of drives home the the brutality of what's mm-hmm. happened and and makes you really see the innocent side of Gemma. The personal. She's a church photos. girl yeah, when she was young exactly. and all that. Yeah. Very well done. Mm-hmm. So as we talked about, there's obviously some aspects of this episode that are pretty heavy. They're pretty hard to want to be present for. Like your your initial reaction or, or instinct is, I don't really want to have to watch this. Mm-hmm. So let's kind of rip the Band-Aid off and get into that. Let's talk about 
the examination, Let's as do I call it. Yeah. it, which is when Gemma goes to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got kind of three major things that happen in this scene. You've got what's happening in the exam room, right, with Gemma. Mm-hmm. You've got uh, it between Gemma and Tara. You've got Gemma and Unser, right, and, and what happens in the exam room between the two of them. And then you have what happens in the hallway, right? Those are kind of the major the major thing. So we'll, we'll kind of break down each of these three areas, but um, the, the title of the episode comes from yes, the it does. exam room. Yes, it does. Because uh, Tara is examining Gemma and um, an eternal examination and makes a statement. There's a number of small tears. There's nothing that won't heal on its own. But yet you see the way Gemma winces when Tara tells her that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's this, what I loved about the performance by Katie Seagal in that scene is she's bouncing between being vulnerable and putting up that front of being tough. Yeah, and she, these she, two things go back and forth throughout this scene, right? So initially, you see her wince, and she's showing that vulnerability of the fact that this brutal act um, happened. But then you see her also kind of just as quickly try to push it down and show strength when she says comments like, mm, "You should have a plastic surgeon look at this. I've been hit before." It's one of those where you sit there and you look at it and you go, as much as she's trying to convince Tara that she's tough, I think she's also trying to convince herself. Yeah. And it's, I mean, she's strong because she's a fighter and she's, she's, she knows what the intent was and it's to get to the club and get to Clay, right? And she's doesn't want to put the club ahead of herself. She is. And she does not want to get that information to get back because that's what they want. Yep. Yep. And then when you have Unser come in, I actually like this even more. First of all, I love when Unser comes in. He's just like, you know, it, as he starts to tell Gemma, everyone's here. It, it, and Gemma wanted to keep this a secret. And she's just wanting to rip his head off. And he's just like, take my head off if you want. I just didn't see any other way to sell this. Uh-huh. It was great. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when, when Unser feels like he may have kind of worn out his welcome and he turns to leave, you see mm-hmm. Gemma grab him by the arm and keep him there. Yeah. And this is one of those, I think the first scenes in this series where you really realize how much these two care for one another. They do. A lot of history there. I mean, there's actually a deep love for one another. There is at a platonic level between these two, and it's it's subtle because you, you caught that right that that she pulled on him to stay there. But again, it's not in your face. You just it's just very well acted. So yeah, I really liked that whole scene that it, uh, occurs between uh, Gemma while she's in the exam room, both with Tara and Unser, and then out in the hallway, Jackson Clay. You can see the tension between the two of them continue to escalate. Um, you know, Clay doesn't like the way that Jax just unilaterally decided to make the body look like it, he was killed by the Niners. Mm-hmm. And Jax is basically saying, "It's I'm doing exactly what you would do. Yeah. yeah. That's basically where it gets left. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to the next point, Ken, and I'll let you take the next one. Um, what, what, what do you want to go to next? Well, real quick, as that scene closed out, I, I got to say, I love the, the, the whole club came to support. At Gemma at the hospital. They they didn't get yes. in, but the, the, the Bobby's incapacitated on the cart, and the whole club's around there. Uh, it, that was a great scene. It was. But, but moving on, because um, once again, Bobby doesn't have a good episode. What he doesn't? He doesn't have a good episode. Meaning he's pretty much hung over and sick or shot through the entire episode. <laughs> that, that's good. Oh, agreed. Agreed. I completely agreed. <laughs> He doesn't have a good episode. I see where we're going with that. Okay, so 
I, I would say the next point I want to bring up is the very well acted Kurt Sutter, and the meaning uh, the meaning auto. Of, the auto, yes the 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 meeting that's arranged. He wants to call the meeting. He calls Clay. He wants someone there. Jax decides to take it, right? And he ends up going. He ends up going solo. Um, I don't know if you caught it, but when when he was walking in, there was a lot of uh, disturbance fighting that was going on there. With yes. was that the Aryan members there that were kind of fighting? Yes, it was. Um, but Jax, he's rolling forward with this Sam Crow t shirt. Makes me want to go get one of those t shirts because I like the shirt. But um, great he, shirt. <laughs> he shows up and sits down and talks to Otto, and and, and Otto's there to ask for the club's help. She needs time and money to get up and running in a new space. We can get her the time. And the money? We're only half healed, Otto. We don't have it. He kind of alludes to wanting some money back that she had loaned the club, which Jax is very, you know, forthright. Matter saying, of fact. It, it, yeah. Matter of fact, hey, we don't have the money. And, but I'll, I'll do what I can. And, and, and Kurt is saying, that, hey, I don't, I don't want Luann to have to go back into the business. Mm-hmm. And you already said it. You said it was well acted. I'm, Kurt Sutter was really, really good in this scene. He was. He was. And he underplays it. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, he, he's underrated as an actor. He did really, really well in this scene. He did. He, he did. And he, he doesn't want Luann to have to go back into the business and, and kind of makes Jack swear. Jack swears and says, I will not let that happen. You have my word. Um, I'll yeah, figure- so let's talk about that because sure. he just hightails it straight on over to Luann to mm-hmm. find out what's going on. Luann lets him know it's our good friend Georgie. Mm-hmm. A.K.A. Tom Arnold. Right. And so Jax pays Georgie a visit. We're here to see Georgie. You got an appointment? Jesus Christ, no. Then you don't see him. Hey, auditions are out back. Let me guess. Georgie Caruso. First of all, I love the kind of bravado that Charlie Hunnam gives to the character in this scene. Mm-hmm. Right? He's, you know... Um, Georgie's bodyguards, his muscle are there to intimidate and there's zero intimidation going on. Sam Crow as a whole are not intimidated. You've got uh, Georgie who comes out and makes the Brad Pitt joke. They were just leaving, Mr. Caruso. That's too bad because this one here's got kind of a Brad Pitt thing going, only not quite as gay. <laughs> Yeah. Right, um, right, right. Comparing Jax to Brad Pitt, and after he lands the joke, I love the way that that Charlie Hunnam as Jax responded, where he's just kind of like, uh, "Yeah," and then kind of moves on from mm-hmm. that point. But mm-hmm. I think there was a little bit of an inside joke there. I have a feeling Charlie Hunnam has been compared to Brad Pitt, and so I have a feeling that's probably why that was written in. Would be probably, my guess. probably. But it's the he. Charlie Hunnam delivers the perfect amount of swagger and and zero fear. This kind of I don't give a shit attitude. I will take every one of you out in a heartbeat. Right. Loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll just quickly say, I also like it when the the one guy that was part of Georgie's muscle kind of pops off, right? With like, you got a problem? Mm-hmm. And the moment he says that, as the club was walking out, everyone turns around and comes back. Like, now we've got a problem. No hesitation. And then you've got Bobby Elvis. You do. Who's not, who's, is pretty ill from the night's nice activities. And what happens? <laughs> not now, man. I feel pretty good, thanks. <laughs> that was great all right and that's going to do it for part two uh once again i want to remind you please like this video subscribe to the show and you can find all of the past episodes of the liquid courage show on our youtube channel or our podcast feed and get caught up on any shows you've missed but once you do 
be sure to top off your glass and come on back and join us for part three, where we're going to continue enjoying some redemption bourbon. And we're going to wrap up our discussion of Sons of Anarchy, season two, episode two, titled Small Tears. Stay with us. <laughs>